This is my 1985 Chevy C10 pickup that we come to find out it runs 16s in the quarter mile. It doesn't accelerate well, the truck is slow, it doesn't feel fast when you're driving it. Luckily, that can be narrowed down to one thing, the rear end setup. It's got a good running motor. It's got 350 small block with a comp, Extreme Energy 268, some other bolt-ons. But if we look out back, we have a 10 bolt rear, eight and a half inch ring gear that has a 273 rear gear set, which is ridiculously tall. Not to mention, it's got open rears, one tire fires all the time. Today, we're doing something about that. We've got a 373 gear set to throw in here. We got new 30 spline axle shafts and we got an Eaton locker so we can have posi and light up both tires. Rip that 10 bolt out, get to work. Let's check it out. Check it out. It is the next day now. I had to run out quick and grab another engine stand. I need an engine stand because I got this fancy bracket thing that holds an axle. So we're gonna get it up on here and then I rigged up this sling. Might hold. There's a lot of slack. So I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to pick it up high enough. All right, we're touching the ceiling. That'll be good. Drop it down a little bit, get it nestled into place. I'll make sure I get it nice and center. That's pretty cool. This was definitely worth it. It's gonna be nice to work on it at working level. And the first thing we'll do here is pull the diff cover, drain all the fluid out, and we're gonna start disassembling the axle because while it's out, I'm gonna sand it down, refresh it, get it ready for some paint, get it looking nice. I do recall using RTV when I put this on here. Out she comes. While the last of that fluid drips out, we'll get this pinion nut off of here. Put one of these U-joint caps on. Stick a pipe in here, hold her steady, and a 32 millimeter socket. Hold still. See if this yoke wants to come off easy. Yoke. Next, we'll get our axle shafts out and get the center section out of the way. And we're gonna spin this carrier around until we see this bolt right here. That's the pin bolt, which is holding this center pin in. Now that that bolt's out, we should be able to drive the pin out. Now that it's punched through, we can spin the carrier all the way around here to give it clearance. Come on now. And we'll get the pin out. Now that the pin is out of the way, that'll allow us to get the axle shafts out. These are C-clip axles, which is that ring right there. So we're gonna push the axle shaft in a little bit, which kind of exposes that C-clip, and we can grab it out of there like that. And that'll allow us to yank this axle shaft on out of there. And now that we got both those axle shafts out, we should be able to fish these spider gears out. Now we can take off our bearing caps and get the carrier out of here. We're gonna pay special attention to the orientation of these caps, left and right, up and down. We're reusing these and they need to go in the same way. We can lift out this carrier. There's gonna be shims on either side and we'll try and keep track of how many came off each side. That way when it comes to setting up our new carrier, we'll have a good starting point idea. There's the races, keep those on there. Looks like we just have some solid shims on either side. They are a different width though. The wider one was on the passenger side. Now we got a rubber mallet. We'll get this pinion gear out of here. <laughs> it's actually kind of comical how huge this thing is for the 273 gear set. Look at this thing. That's funny. Now with that pinion gear out of the way, it'll be a lot easier to get our seal out of here. Our outer 
pinion bearing. The outer race will have to drive out along with that inner race. Now on either side of this pinion bearing race, you see these little shoulders. That way we can get a punch on here, knock that race out. And same idea with that inner pinion race, two little shoulders, and then we can get on it with a hammer. Oh. Boom. With the housing now completely gutted, I went ahead and cleaned it up. Wire brush, brake clean, some rags. I'm happy with it. Now the fun begins. We are gonna start assembly. And the first thing we need to do is get the pinion bearing races pressed into the housing. As you can see on the old pinion gear, the inner pinion bearing that's pressed onto the gear, it's the bigger one there, takes this bigger race that needs to get pressed in or hammered in to that spot right there. The inner race gets punched in from the housing side but the outer race, we're gonna punch in from the yoke side. Looking at the bearings on the old pinion gear, you see that they're facing opposite directions, so the races need to be put in in opposite directions as well. Let me use this old race to help us out a little bit. That way I can use a bigger driver. The housing is now ready for our pinion gear. By the way, look at the size difference between 273 and 373. That's crazy. Anyway, we need to separate this inner pinion bearing from the old gear. That way we can see how many shims are stacked up from the factory setup. And we're gonna replicate that on the new setup to kind of give us a good starting point for setting up pinion depth. Over to the press. This device here is a bearing separator. It goes between the bearing and the pinion gear, kind of scoop it up. And we wanna make sure that we're grabbing the actual inner bearing and not the cage here. Coming out nice. There it is. Old pinion, which we should be done with completely now. And here is the inner bearing that we just pressed off and our one single shim, it looks like. So we'll grab a measurement on that. Now, what we're gonna do from here is make some setup bearings. I already did the outer bearing. This is the one that came off the old pinion. And all I did was take my die grinder with a drum sander on it, wallered out the inside until it fits on the pinion gear. This way, when we're setting everything up, we don't have to press the actual bearing on, on and off a hundred times. We can just slip these right on, set everything up, and then when it comes time for final assembly, we'll press on the actual thing. We're ready for pinion assembly. I made that inner setup bearing with my die grinder, like I was talking about, and it slips right on, and then our outer setup bearing. I measured the shim that came off the stock setup and got somewhere around 36 thousandths. These are all the shims that came with the gear set, and we'll try and find one that's similar. All right, we got two stacked together here. That's pretty much exactly 36 thousandths. So that is the one we're gonna run. To the housing. First, we got our 36 thousandths shim pack that we made, our inner setup bearing. We'll send it through the housing. Then our outer setup bearing. For setting up, we're not gonna put in a crush sleeve or the outer oil seal. We're just gonna go straight to the yoke and we're gonna torque this down till there's just a little bit of drag. Right like that. Pinion gear is installed, just waiting on our carrier now, which I'm gonna assemble right now. I already pressed a bearing on one of the sides of the carrier. So these were actually pretty easy to get on here. Didn't take a whole lot of force. To get it started, I actually took one of my drivers, flipped it upside down so it fit in there real nice and then just If you heard that bottom out, it's because it did, but we're actually not quite seated all the way where we need to be. If you'll have a look at our other side here, you can see the carrier actually protrudes a little bit from the bearing. So we need to just hit the outside of the bearing the rest of the way down to get it completely seated. Now, I really probably should have a pipe or something that just hits the bearing and not the cage, but I don't. So I got this old race right here that kind of fits over everything pretty nice. Get it the rest of the way. Looks good. As you can see here, we have a little bit of a gap. The ring gear is not just gonna drop down onto the flange. It's a uh, little bit of a friction fit. So we're just gonna hit it with some heat, slowly spin it, heat up that ring gear a little bit. All right, drop down a little bit. Get it motivated a little bit. Got the carrier inverted and we'll bolt down this ring gear. Little red Loctite on all the hardware. And it's lefty tighty on this here ring gear. Oh yeah, left. To help torque those ring gear bolts down to 65 foot-pounds, I bolted the axle to a wheel here. We'll slip this on. 
we can finally drop in our carrier and start to set up the gears. Got the races on there. For initial setup, we're gonna use the big thick shims that came out of here uh, with the factory carrier and the thicker one was on the right here. Try and move this race over a little bit. Remember, if it don't fit, force it. Gonna put the bearing caps on, torque them down, and we'll check our backlash. To measure backlash, we have a dial indicator set up on the ring gear with the tip of it on the very top of the tooth here, just enough so it doesn't slip off or anything. If I rock this back and forth without actually turning anything, you might be able to hear like an audible click of how much play the gear has. If you can hear that, that sound pretty much is our backlash. All backlash is, is how far away the ring gear is to the pinion gear. So if we take a close look at our dial indicator here, the spec is between six thousandths and ten thousandths. I have the gauge zeroed out and you can see it maxes out right there about eight thousandths, which is awesome news. That means our side to side shims are good, which again are the factory ones that we took out and just reused. So that's awesome. Now that we know backlash is okay, the only other measurement we need to worry about is pinion depth, which is how close the pinion is to the center line of the axle. And without special measuring tools and stuff like that, pretty much the only way we can tell if it's okay or not is based on the pattern we get when we paint the gears. So that's what we're gonna do next and hope it checks out. And I don't wanna lay it on too thick, that way the gear can actually make an impression. That looks pretty good to me. Let's see what happens. Now, first we're gonna go forward, this way. Contact the pinion. There, it's coming up the other side. And now, we will go backwards. Holy crap. I think we're good. There's no way. That is about a perfect pattern. It's centered both ways on the tooth, like perfectly in the middle. There's no hard edges, they kind of taper off. It's got that football shape. That's awesome. We are ready for final assembly. Well, we pretty much had to tear down everything again to get to an empty housing. But now that we verified everything is in spec, we can take off our setup bearings and we can press on the actual bearings that we're gonna use. The spacers are still on here, the 36 thousandths. So we'll slide on the bearing, take it over the press. Load this guy up in here. Steady, on we go. All right, we're there, got tight. Back over here with our housing and we are going to drop in this outer seal or outer bearing. And then we'll drive in the outer seal here. Ready to send the pinion gear up through. Loop up this bearing a little bit and make sure we throw on our crush sleeve. Send it in. I need to throw the yoke on next, but I'm gonna use some RTV on the splines just to put a light film on there and hopefully prevent a leak. Now that bearing is just sitting in there and we're, kinda, we're gonna kinda use the yoke to help pull it in onto the pinion gear. I'm gonna use the impact to kinda pull everything together and then we'll talk about preload. To make sure I'm not over tightening, pretty much I'm gonna keep checking for back and forth movement like that. I'm just gonna tighten it up till we get rid of all that. So now we want to keep an eye on our preload, which we want about 20 inch pounds to keep the yoke turning. I have this uh, beam style inch pound torque wrench. So we want like 20, like right there. So if we put this on here and start spinning it and we're not even on the gauge yet. So we got some tightening to do. We're just going to turn it in small increments at a time because we're crushing that crush sleeve. And if we go too far, there's no going back. I'm going to make a line on this socket just so I can see how much it moves. And we want to keep checking it in small increments because it'll once it gives, it gives like that. That's at about 25, which is fine. It'll be all right. That's why you don't want to go too far too quick. That only went another quarter turn and we're already, we jumped all the way up to 25. Got our flip back around again. And all we got to do now is reassemble the carrier. Same exact way as we put it together earlier when we were testing everything, make sure we get the shims in there and then bolts torqued down. Then we can talk about axles. We're ready to slide these in. And again, these are the Moser 30 spline axle shafts. And then I'll just install the factory C-clip. All right, I'll get you guys close up for the other side. Other side coming in. And there it is. And then you see that groove right now, it's in the center. We pull that back to that position right there. Drop in our C-clip. We have the spacer we need to drop in, part of the Detroit kit. 
like that. Drop in this retaining cylinder. And then we got a snap ring to hold it in place. Regear and posi complete. I'm just buttoning it up by throwing on the diff cover here. I've made a decision. This video is probably getting on the longer side. So I'm gonna slam this thing back together quick, get it under the truck. We're gonna go right to testing, do a little street test. Caltrax, I'll do a whole separate installation video for that. So let's get this 10 bolt back under the truck, go for a rip. Had to run out for some gear oil, but we got her topped off. Just regular 80 weight 90, non-synthetic gear oil. And with this particular Eaton Detroit locker, you don't need any kind of additives or anything. It's all mechanical. There's no clutches or anything. We're ready for a rip. intersection we got to be able to peel out <laughs> all right i picked up our chief butt dino correspondent <laughs> for his uh honest reviews That is going to wrap it up for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you stay tuned for the cow track install, and then we're going to be heading back to the track and uh, seeing what kind of improvements we made. But take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.